Hey guys, it's Dark with Cyclone FPV, and I was asked by a couple of the students who go to the local high school here, uh, they need some help um, uh, plugging in their HDLRC F3V4, which is on one of their kits, with a receiver. Let's say you have a PWM uh, receiver, right? So we're not using SBUS or IBUS, or at that point we're not using PPM, we're going to use PWM. So um, they, were, they initially, uh, I guess, were told or thought that you couldn't do that, and actually you can. And I'm going to show you how to do that, but we're going to split this screen up so you can see what's on the computer screen here, uh, what I'm working on, and then also I can be talking to you. So let me uh, do the screens here, and hopefully this will be easier to understand. So you have one, two, three right there, okay? So if I move these over, what you're looking at right now is on the, on the, on the farther screen over there, you're going to see the um, wiring diagram, which is actually on our website. So if you go to cyclonefpv.com, uh, right, uh, so let me just take you to the home page here. So if you go to our website, and then you you can either type here Let me go f3 v4 and hit enter and then right there the first link is going to be the uh, actual board itself and then if you click the um, Image here and then you double click it there. You're gonna see the big space So that's what we're gonna use as a reference, right? So here's the board actually now, this is a used board So I mean it's kind of been beat up a little bit You can see it doesn't have the but it, it should still be functioning with no problem I'm gonna clear up some of this solder here so that I can make sure that we're okay and make sure these don't touch or ground out. Um, okay, so, and then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a DC, AC to DC converter to power it up. And then right here, what we have is we have a PWM uh, receiver. So this isn't gonna be able to run SBUS or IBUS, okay? Well, let me show you what's gonna happen here. So with the F3V4, you have this one set here, and I believe this is seven. Uh, let me make sure, so it's, uh, I think it's a seven pin connection. So it's one, two, three, Actually, maybe more than that. So one, two, three, and then one, two, three, four, five. So it's an eight pin connection, okay? And if you look at the diagram, it, co it correlates to the diagram that's on the screen right here. So you have the first three wires, which is gonna be ground and five volt, and then you have your first signal, okay? Which is also gonna act as your, um, this is if you're using uh, uh, PPM, right? So, and then going on down here, you're gonna have uh, your ground and five volt here, and this is actually now going to act as your PWM channel one. So if you're looking at your receiver right here, it's actually going to go like this. You have signal, positive, and ground. So it's going to sit just like that, okay? And then you're going to go to wire number two, right, which is going to be the next one. And you're going to put, you're going to plug it in the same, but you won't have the bottom two cables because this is a rail setup, which means that ground, once you plug in ground to one, they're all connected. Once you plug in your five volt to one, they're all connected. So you don't have to keep plugging those in. So you're going to put in channel two, okay? And then we're going to go to channel three right here and then we're going to go to channel four right here now we're not going to be using five and six but you're more than welcome to hook those up if you want just to get the cables out of the way it won't really cause any problems but we're not going to be using them right now okay so let's just leave that like that now there now that is how the pwm would look if you've connected it all now that's with again six channels uh give me a second i need to go close this door real quick <clears throat> Okay, so grab my coffee and let's finish this up. So that's as simple as it is. With the, with the cables already provided uh, that comes with it, you've just basically wired up your receiver now. Now you have to go to the programming side. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna plug it in and we're gonna connect to Betaflight real quick and I'll show you how to configure this. All right, just give me a second to plug that in. Okay, now let me launch Betaflight. There it is, let's plug in the board. Okay, see we got lights going, so we're good. Go ahead and click connect. Okay, now under our configuration, if we're using PWM, it really doesn't matter what we've got here because PWM, it's gonna be this one right here, one wire per channel. So you click that, click save. Okay, and let's see what else we've got. Um, we should see, uh, we've gotta get power to this eventually, so let me go ahead and do that real quick, okay. I'm just going to try to leave this here so you can see it, but I may have to turn it around a little bit. If our wires are too short, then let me see. Okay, no, this will be fine. All right, so I'm going to go ahead, turn this on to make sure I've got, okay, I'm going to run 11.8 volts to this, and I don't think we're going to have any problem. So there we go. We've got our power, and uh, I can see that my light is blinking on my receiver, and you can see that as well. I think if you, if you look right there, you might be able to see the red blinking, okay? So we've got our power now. Uh, we've got our board. You can see on Betaflight, we can see a reading here, okay? So now what I need to do is I need to bind the receiver. So here's my um, FlySky receiver right here. And uh, let me see, where is my... 
I don't have my little jumper wire here, so I may have to get that one second. Give me one sec to go grab that. I thought I had it on the table, and I don't. So let me see what I can do here. Bear with me one sec. Let me turn this power off real quick so I can get this jumper. I really thought I had it. I guess I don't. All right, give me one second to get that, guys. I'll be right back. Okay guys, so uh, I'm back right now and I actually changed the board out. I noticed something on the board that I was using. So I went ahead and opened a new one because I needed to be able to see, uh, I wanted to be able to get the readout and everything as well. So we're back where we were and I was lo looking for that jumper cable, right? So I couldn't find one, but you can just use anything. So I just grabbed one of these servo cable, servo cables, uh, female to female on each side. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna plug on the end here. Oh, and I, I guess I could put these back in. Sorry, I took these out, but let me put these back in. So we had, uh, what is that, channel five and channel six. So let me do that real quick. Channel five and channel six, okay? All right, so on the, uh, to, to jumper this so that we can pair it, right, to bind it. Let me turn this off real quick. Um, we're gonna put uh, one end of this cable uh, on this. Uh, you have a three pin connection on the end here. And we're gonna put the other end. So we're not gonna touch the middle pin, okay? We're just gonna leave it like that, right? Now we're gonna go ahead and plug this into the uh, flight controller like it was before. So just plug it in like normal, okay? And then I'm going to add my power here. So um, looking at this, I'm going to go with my power on this side. I'm going to put my ground over here. Okay. And before I turn it on, though, and I will go ahead and I'll put the USB in just a minute. But before I turn it on, the one thing I want to do, and I was hoping I can get you to see the light that's going to be on here blinking. But I want to put my radio in binding mode. So I'm going to hold the binder, bind key down, and I'm going to turn it on. And you're going to see it says RX binding right here. You should see on the screen, right? Now I'm going to go ahead and turn this on with that one cable jumped across. And what you're gonna see here is, uh, whoops, it didn't, it didn't do that, it didn't do what I want. Hold on, sorry, let me do this again. Okay, RX binding. Let me see. Oh, hold on, maybe I messed something up here. Bear with me a second. Okay. Well, it should be binding. Let's see if it's going to have a problem. Okay, it did bind. Just, sorry, it was a very quick flash, but it is bound now. And so now we've got a solid. So what I'm going to do now is turn this off, unplug the cable. Sorry, I hit bound a couple times there. There we go, and let me turn this on. And now we've got our solid light, okay? So where it's it's bound. So I apologize, I kind of skipped that. I couldn't see that it had blinked really fast. What you'll notice though is that when you go to bind it, right? It'll blink really quickly and then it'll stop and start blinking slowly. That means it bound. I missed that whole blinking fast part because I was watching this wrong. So anyways, okay, so now that we're bound, right? We're gonna go ahead and put our USB back in so we can get into beta flight. There we go. And um, we're gonna go on our radio and here and let's look at our settings real quick. So under our system settings, we're gonna click OK, and I'm gonna scroll down. Now my, your screen and mine may be a little different, but just make sure you go to your RX setup. And we're gonna have the AFHDS 2A, we're gonna have that on. Let's go back, and we're gonna to go to our PPM output, and we're gonna look here. I'm using SBUS slash PWM, because we're gonna be using PWM on this, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, we're gonna cancel out, right? All right, so now we're gonna go into beta flight, which you can see on your screen here. Let's click connect. And what we're going to do is ports. For the first thing, ports, you don't have to have any ports activated, okay? Then we're going to go to configuration, and we're going to make sure that we have, in the drop-down menu, just select PWM RX input one wire per channel, and click save and reboot. Okay, and let, let's get it to reboot real quick. Okay, now we're going to go to receiver. And under receiver, there you go. You can now see that you have your control set up, okay? And you've got your switches that are activated when you flip them, so you're good there and you can see everything, basically you have all your controls like normal. So the idea was here to show you that you can use a, uh, a PWM receiver with the board like the F3V6, uh, sorry, the F3V4 board, like the one that you're using on your kit. Uh, all you need to do is just connect to PWM like normal and you're set to go. Now, I normally would not connect these last two because this is gonna be channels five and six, which I wouldn't use, but I wouldn't necessarily cut them either. Um, you can use those down the road, like if one of the other channels fails, you can use that and reroute it using resources. 
But hopefully that helps, guys. I'm sorry I had to cut the video, uh, but I did want to be able to see the, the readout as well and look at the board. So that's how you do it. That's how you set up for PWM. You see all the settings here. If you have any questions, by all means, please, uh, let me switch to one screen here. Uh, if you have any questions, by all means, please email me at tark at cyclonefpv.com. And also please subscribe to our channel here. And then uh, you can always follow us on Cyclone FPV at, uh, at the Facebook page, okay? Other than that, guys, safe flying. God bless. Spend time with your families. Uh, you never know how much time you have, so please make the most of it with your families, okay? Uh, see you soon. Peace. Bye.